In this example, we will discuss fixed point numbers, which are a way for the computer, like a 9S12, to handle non integer values. We will discuss dropout, which is an error that can occur on a right shift or divide, and overflow, which can occur on a left shift or a multiply. And lastly, we'll solve this problem two ways first using the IDIV instruction and then using the FDIV. Let's begin. In this example, we have been asked to write assembly code which converts an 8-bit unsigned number, here going from 0 to 255, into a number which is 0 to 500. This is very typical of a microcontroller operation because sometimes we're converting one input type to another. For example, like converting from centimeters to inches, or vice versa. When asked to solve a problem like this, we try to think of the problem in another way. We see over here we have a graphical representation of the problem, and secondly, we can write a table. In other words, if n is equal to zero, the output m will also be zero. And on the other end of the scale, if the n is 255, which is the maximum 8-bit unsigned number, then we expect our m to be 500. And following along, we can fill in some other parameters. For instance, halfway between is 128. And we'd expect the 128 to map into 250. Hmm, what do we do next? As a first thought, we might ask, well, if I were doing it on my calculator, how might I perform this operation? And if I take n and multiply it times 1.96 dot 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 times n, I'll get my answer m. But this doesn't seem like the right answer, does it? Similarly, I could have taken n and divided it by 0 0.51. This gives us the right answer, but difficult to implement in a computer like the 9S12. Ah, this one looks better. If we're converting from one range to another, one way to solve this is to multiply the input number by the maximum value of the output number and then divide by the maximum value of the input number. Or in this case, multiply n times 500 and divide by 255. This looks much better. But what else could we have done? One of the questions we have to ask is what will be the size of the intermediate result? In other words, if we take 500 and multiply it times 255, we're going to get a number of 127,000 something. This won't fit in a 16-bit number, so we need a way to simplify this. For example, if I simplify this expression, dividing out the common factor of 5, I'll get smaller numbers. 100 times n divided by 51 is the same operation, but the intermediate result, 100 times 255, is much smaller and only 25,000. This indeed will fit in a 16-bit number. However, if I try to solve this overflow problem by dividing first, n divided by 51 will be an integer. And this integer times 100 must be either 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, or 500. And this leads us to an important observation when we multiply and divide in the same expression. And that is, it is best to multiply first and divide second rather than to divide first and multiply second because dividing first will cause a dropout error. The overflow error that it could occur with multiplying first can be handled with a precision, but this dropout error throws away bits that we can never recover. Sometimes it's okay to approximate. For instance, we might be tempted to define 100 divided by 51 as simply a 2 and implement this as a left shift. We see that we will get an error which will goes larger as the input rises. Again, it's okay sometimes to approximate, but in this example, the best answer is shown here in the middle. We'll first multiply times 100 and then divide by 51. In C, we could have solved this using the following code. And the operation is simply to multiply n times 100 and then divide by 51. The compiler would have dealt with the conversion of this 8-bit operation into this 16-bit operation by promoting n. The first step in assembly language will be to bring n into an 8-bit register. Just like the other examples, 
we've selected an 8-bit register to store this 8-bit variable. An N can be a number to 0 to 255. Our approach will be to use the MUL instruction to perform the 8 times 8 into 16-bit multiply, which will be the 100 times N. So we've brought N into register A and the constant 100 into register B. Notice that register A has the variable N and register B has the constant. After executing the MUL instruction, register D will have the value of 100 times N. If N were 0 to 255, register D would be 0 to 25,000. We check this 25,000 to be sure that overflow did not occur. An overflow cannot occur at this point because register D can only take on the values of 0 to 25,500. The next step in the program is to set up to use the integer division. The integer division instruction will take register D and divide it by register X. So the next step of our program is to bring the constant 51 into register X. After the IDIV instruction, register X will contain the quotient of 100 times n divided by 51. This will be in register x, and we see that this value could be any number from 0 to 500. Again, this fits into a 16-bit register, and so no overflow could occur. Register d, by the way, would have gotten the remainder after that division. And the last step of this program is to store the result into m, and this program successfully converts the number n, which is 0 to 255, into the number m, which is 0 to 500. In general, we can use the f divide instruction to convert one number into another if that conversion constant is greater than 1. In that case, it is, because 100 divided by 51 is larger than 1. And we solve for a constant using the following relationship. In other words, when we execute the F divide instruction, we perform this operation, where 65, 535 is first multiplied times the input and then divided by this constant. So to use this instruction, we need to find the constant such that 65, 536 divided by this constant is the desired multiplication ratio, the desired slope of this curve, which is 100 over 51. So when we solve for this constant, we see that we get a number of 33423.36 and we'll approximate this constant with a 33423. The fdiv instruction is equivalent of taking register D, multiplying by 65536 and then dividing by register X and the quotient goes here into register X. So first we're going to set up register D with the value N. N was an 8-bit number, and so we will first bring it into register B and then clear A. Our second step is to bring that constant into register X, and now we're all set up for the f-divide. After executing the f-div, register X will contain the value of 65,536 times n divided by 33,423. And the last step is to store that result into the variable m. So, in summary, we looked at fixed point, which is a way to represent non-integer values using integer arithmetic. We did it first using the mul and idiv instruction, where we multiplied times 100 first and then divided by 51. And then secondly, we used the fdiv instruction which is a combination of multiply and divide all in one instruction. Dropout occurs when we perform a right shift or divide, and we saw the important relationship such that if you're going to multiply and divide, it's important to multiply first and divide second to avoid dropout. Overflow is possible with the multiply, and so we considered the size of this intermediate multiplication. In this case, we saw that it was less than 16 bits, and we were OK. And we saw that we could solve problems in multiple ways. Here we did it with the IDIV, and here we did it with the FDIV. 
Thank you very much.